So this turbo build cost me almost $9,000 to complete, but in this video, we're going to see what it takes to do a similar build for close to three grand. So what if you'd like to live life on the edge and half-ass a build? What if you're bored and you just want to try to turbocharge an E46 for as little money as you can? What if you like to torture yourself by working on your car every time you go to the track because you didn't do any supporting mods? What if this is your second car and you don't mind the extra downtime and you don't mind being stuck on the side of the road because it broke down yet again? What if you can't afford to do this build all at once? Maybe you should save up. In all seriousness guys, in my last video I broke down exactly how much it cost to do this turbo build. If you haven't seen that video, you should probably check it out. I'll link it in the description below. As I mentioned in the video, I'm very meticulous about keeping track of every single penny that I've spent on this build. Every part, every fastener, every fitting, lines, materials, all that jazz. Knowing this, I wanted to see if there's a way to do a similar build, but at a much cheaper cost and only using the parts that I actually use for this specific build. If you want to follow along, which I suggest you do, go ahead and check out the link to the Google Sheet in the description. I have every single part that I've used on this build on the Google Sheet and I have hyperlinked it whenever I could so that you could theoretically replicate the build yourself. There are a lot of assumptions that I'm going to be making in this video, some of which can be very risky and can leave you stranded on the side of the road or stuck in the pits at the track. With that being said, let's dissect this build and see if you could do this for $3,000. So I'm going to be breaking this down into the same categories that I used in my last video. Again, I have a Google Sheet linked in the description. I did add a column called bare bones. And essentially these are the items that I believe are absolutely necessary when doing a build similar to this, which is a bottom mount turbo setup. So starting off with engine and transmission, I estimated that you can do essentially the same thing that I did for $210, which is quite a bit different compared to what I actually spent on this build at $3,800. Now bear in mind for my build, I had to source another engine and transmission. I put in an expensive clutch, a catch can, an M50 manifold, an oil pump nut solution, and an oil pan baffle. So for my bare bones setup, I only have a modified motor mount and a sap delete. The engine and transmission, ideally you probably have a car that already has an engine and transmission so that's not going to be an expense. Hopefully it's also a 328 or a 330 model because those come with the better transmission. I'm not so much worried about the motor, I'm more worried about the transmission. I'm also assuming that you have a decent performing clutch in there. Now I'm not saying that you're going to be able to hold 400 wheel torque but let's say you're on low boost like I am, maybe your stock clutch could do for the meantime. Same can be said about the bushings and the oil pump nut. Hopefully your bushings are still in decent condition and can hold the torque and the power. And maybe you're going to take the risk on that oil pump nut. I myself wouldn't do that, but I know plenty of people that have ran their cars with no modifications to their oil pump nut. For the record, I don't condone that. You're probably going to blow your motor, but I'm just saying. As far as the cash can setup goes, theoretically, you could just vent to atmosphere. Now, I don't have a stock CCV port, but say you just had a tube coming off of that, or you just left it wide open, and then you plugged all of the OEM CCV system. Now, an M50 intake manifold, you obviously don't need. It was more of a want for my case because it simplifies the setup, but you could very well just keep your OEM intake manifold. Now, because of the age of these cars or the typical age of these cars, you may have extra risk with vacuum leaks because of vacuum lines breaking and that sort of stuff. And also an oil pan baffle may not be necessary for your setup. Say for example, if it's a street car, you probably don't need an oil pan baffle. Same can be said about drift cars. You probably don't need an oil pan baffle. That said, when comparing my bare bones setup to the setup that I have in my car, there's a lot of opportunity for cost savings when it comes to engine and transmission. Now as far as maintenance and refresh goes, we're going to assume that you're going to go full risk and full send and just do no maintenance to the car and address it as necessary. Obviously I can't stress this enough, you are taking a risk by not doing any preventative maintenance, but hey, that's your call. Let's assume that you got a unicorn 
330 where the previous owner did all the maintenance and you want to assume that he did a good job or she the only thing that i'd really do is the spark plugs and a e36 manifold gasket you could argue that the spark plugs are not necessary but i mean for a couple bucks and how easy it is to access it you might as well do it same with the e36 manifold gaskets they're going to be a lot better than the max p ross manifold that i'm using give you a little bit less headache down the line Now as far as the turbo exhaust side, not much is different here at $843. The only thing that I really changed between my setup and a bare bone setup is I didn't do any of the recirculated wastegate stuff so you could save on a flex pipe, some of the tubing that's involved with it, and one less flange. So for this case, you're still going to be keeping the same manifold, turbo, wastegate, wastegate piping, fittings, and exhaust material. Now the intake side of the turbo is pretty much the same actually. At $454, you're not saving much compared to the 519 that I've spent on my setup. The only thing that's really changed is I took out the gold reflective tape for the hot side intercooler piping, as well as the boost control solenoid, which I'm not even running on this car. And of course, no blow off valve, which is actually the same as this car. So the cost difference is actually less. Now for my turbo feed and return, my bare bone setup came out to $548, which compared to my setup at $842, there's a couple hundred dollars worth of savings that can be had if you didn't waste money on materials and fittings. A lot of this is due to poor oil drain design. Had I done more research and kind of planned out how I'm going to tackle the oil drain, I probably could have saved a lot more money. In this case, I still assume that you're going to be using a scavenge pump. Instead, you'd be routing a line directly off the turbo into the scavenge pump and then back into the oil pan. I'm running a drip tank slash sump that comes off the turbo on my setup, but a dash 10 AN line coming off of the turbo straight to a scavenge pump has been used on people's builds with success. So I don't see a problem if you were to do it that way as well. I also didn't include any water cooling lines to simplify the setup and to reduce some of that cost. I know some people will argue that if the turbo is designed for water cooling, then you should probably route the lines. On the flip side, I have seen people run these turbos without water cooling. From what I understand, water cooling is typically for when the engine is shut off so that you don't bake the oil in the turbo. But if you kind of just let the car cool down after a nice drive, then theoretically, you should be fine. Now, theoretically, you could save a couple hundred more dollars by ditching a scavenge pump, but it seems like the success rate for a bottom mount turbo without a scavenge pump is kind of low. So keep that in mind. You'd probably be good without a scavenge pump for a better manifold, but in this video, I'm only using the parts that I have used on this build. Now for fuel, you didn't really save much. My bare bone setup is coming in at 491 versus 552 what I've actually spent on this car. And that's purely because I bought a new fuel pressure regulator. Ideally, you could use a fuel pressure regulator that's already on your car. For electronics, the bare bones isn't much different than my actual at 692 compared to 702. And that's because I left out the serial connector that I originally tried to connect to the wideband. However, that didn't work out and I had better luck just hardwiring my gauge to one of the Postcat OT sensor plugs. And then last but not least, cooling. We're going full send. We're not gonna touch the cooling system at all. And taking that full risk. Hopefully you got lucky and you bought a car where the previous owner replaced the entire cooling system beforehand. So if you really wanted to try to save as much money as you can on a build like this, you could theoretically have a turbo setup for $3,301.96. Now I did constrain myself to the parts that I have used on this build. I'm sure there are ways that you can cut costs and possibly get a build for under $3,000. Now, unfortunately, by building this way, you are taking on a lot of risk. By running the stock clutch, you may end up not being able to hold the power that you're making with the turbo setup. Worst case scenario, you could end up grenading that clutch, and that might mess up your input shaft or your transmission. By not refreshing and upgrading your cooling system, you could end up overheating your motor, which for these aluminum straight sixes usually ends up with a warped head and unfortunately a large bill at your local machine shop or even a new motor altogether. 
By not addressing the oil pump nut, you're obviously taking a big risk there. You could end up losing oil pressure without even knowing it, and then you end up with a spun bearing. Now most people do run the stock intake manifold, but you may end up with a bunch of headaches trying to chase down the vacuum leaks. By not running a proper cash can setup, you could have some issues there. If you vent the atmosphere without a cash can, you could end up dumping oil on the floor. You definitely don't want that. That said, this video is purely theoretical. It is by no means a roadmap to doing a turbo build as cheap as possible. If you want to see the actual cost of this turbo build, go ahead and check out the video linked in the description. With that said, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next one.